seems like that as a foundation, at a foundation level, we have uh, different definitions of what human being is. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is we all have witnessed for last few months what's going on in Gaza. Kids are being butchered. The myth of the Western modern human crisis or human human rights have been exposed badly. Men and women are being slaughtered. Pregnant women have to go through miscarriages. And yet you will see the champions of human rights, the champions of women's rights are quiet at this point. And you'll be surprised. Actually, they are concerned. The women rights activists are concerned. Not because the woman, the pregnant woman in Palestine, they have to go through miscarriage. They are concerned because the Barbie did not get a nomination for Oscar. If you know which tweet I'm talking about. That's the major concern we have. If someone have to go through miscarriage, who cares? But Barbie should get nominated for the Oscars. If this is not enough to expose the mythology of the modern Western human rights, take Yemen then. Our economic-centered worldview, our priority to money over human life is exposed in Yemen. If this is not enough, then take Indian Muslims also, what happened last week to them. We are also minority here, right? Indian Muslims are also minority. They are also deceived and fooled, like we are being deceiving, de uh, deceiving ourselves for the last few years about the beauty and attraction, yet deception in secularization is actually a good system. They were also saying this. What happened? They would say that in secularization you can worship your God in the house of worship. What they did? They actually destroyed the masjid and they built a mandir and a temple there. Because secularization actually meant that we were going to redefine what religion is. If this is not enough to expose the mythology of the modern Western human rights, then take the bombshell report which came two weeks ago or three weeks ago about Epstein list of the sexual discipline of some of the big names of this country. More than 900 pages, I'm pretty sure some of you have read that. Some of the leaders of this country are exposed. And guess what? Some of those leaders were the champions of women's rights. <laughs> and now they are proved that they did not have a discipline in their sexual life. This is the hypocrisy, to say the least. That's why I'm saying Western moral values are crumbling, not even crumbling. They are committing suicide in Gaza. And this is dichotomy for most of us in West because we are international leaders in terms of technology. Yet, morally, we are getting bankrupt. How is this? You might disagree with me. I was thinking a lot about why this issue is coming. We have a very different way to define what human being is versus the West or the modern West, how they define human being. So let's open Quran. Inshallah, in these two ayat of Surah Al-Hashar, what I just recited, I'm going to explain or try to explain what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains or give us conceptualization of what human being means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we're going to have a comparison with what, how modern West have defined human being. Before I can go directly to this ayah, you have to actually know that there are three major differences between how we as a Muslim define human being versus how the modern West will going to define human being before we can go through these ayat. And this is very important as a disclaimer. In the modern society, what is human being? Modern society consider human being as a mechanical body, as a machine, as a body, made up of few chemicals. But do they believe in soul? No, because soul comes from the unseen. They cannot observe from the empirical signs. Anything coming from the unseen world, it's easily deniable because it's a skeptical. They cannot observe from the physical sciences. And furthermore, soul comes from Allah. The modernity denied Allah. So what we can see is the physical body, that's the human being according to the modern West. 
So if you ask someone, by the way, my name is Asif Hirani, if you don't know, if you ask someone, who is Asif Hirani? Will we get the definition, Asif Hirani is made up of calcium, salt and water? Will you hear this definition? No. But that's exactly my chemistry. That's my chemical definition. But we know when you are asking about Asif Hirani or Fulan, Fulan, you are meaning more than the chemical definition. But once you deny the soul, once you deny whatever coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then your entire focus is the mechanical body. And when you start treating your body as a machine, you know what will happen? How you treat your car? You just drove to come to Ali Ranch, right? The car will need a gas, you'll fill the gas. The car will need an oil change after six months, you'll take to an oil change. Maybe a flat tire once in every two years, you'll do that and you're good to go. Because car does not have any moral worth. But human being have a moral worth because the soul came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our human body have physical desires. Body wants to drink, body wants to eat, body wants to have a relationship. But whether it's halal haram, body doesn't care. Soul will going to tell the body that eat halal, have relationship in a halal way. Body doesn't know nikah versus zina. Drugs, rock and roll and dash. This will be the culture if you deny the soul. And that's why with no surprises, our modern Western life have become extremely hedonistic. Extremely hedonistic. That's the first basic difference between the modern Western human versus Islamic human. In Islam we say, we have a body and we have a soul. Soul comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alastu bi rabbikum qalu bala. The same soul is blown into the womb of my mother and I came into this dunya as a combination of the body and the soul. If I will going to eat something, my soul will remind if it's alive, eat halal. If I will have a relationship, my body will remind only halal relationship. Don't destroy your family. That's the first thing. First basic difference. Second basic difference between the Western concept of, or modern Western concept of human being versus Islamic concept of human being is that modern West believes human being in this dunya, right? But do they believe in akhirah? No, akhirah is from the unseen. Jannah and hell is from the unseen. It's difficult to observe from the physical empirical science. Anything from the metaphysical unseen world, it's doubtful or skeptical. So let's deny that. Once you deny the unseen world and akhirah, you know what will happen to this human? In the modern West, when this human denies the akhirah, you know what will happen? This human will go wild because there is no sense of accountability. Those who have small kids, I have three of them, three toddlers. If you will not punish your kids and discipline your kids, and if you will say, do whatever you want, no punishment, no discipline, will your kids go wild? If you, those parents are smiling, I can, I can actually feel that. Young people who just started driving, if you will tell them, drive as fast as you can, no tickets, will they go wild? They're already wild, <laughs> right? When you remove the fear of consequences, what people will do, they will go wild. Modern human, remove the consequences of akhirah, they will go wild. I can do whatever I want, no consequences of akhirah. I can kill your baby, I can occupy your land, you know what I'm talking about? With no consequences of akhirah. As long as I can control the propaganda, I'm good. The entire mindset of the modern human is coming from the denial of the consequences that one day I have to be accountable. In Islam we say, whatever we do in this dunya, it's not the end of the life, it's the beginning of the life. Because once I will die, I have to be accountable for my actions. That is radically different than the modern human definition. That's the second thing. And the last, and you can say the backbone of the modern Western human definition is modern human definition is that we believe in the modern West, in human being, in human self, right? But we don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you don't believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you don't, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from the unseen, when you don't believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this modern self, this modern human being, wants to become primary. Our centrality, our authority, our focus will be given to this human being and human self. God, religion, revelation have to come second. Anything have to come second. 
Any tradition which is asking us to change our human self, that becomes toxic. That tradition becomes toxic in this modern West. That tradition have to accommodate this human self because this human being is empowering and sovereign to itself. These are three major differences between the modern Western human being or and the Islamic human being. Islam says you have your human self and human being, but make it subservient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep this in mind, and now in last five minutes, inshallah, listen to these two ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, in Surah Al-Hashr, famous ayat, O you who believe, Ittaqullah, be God conscious. It's very interesting, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, O all the modernist, you are self-conscious. Be God conscious. You are self-centric. Be God-centric. And honestly speaking, you're not self-centric. You and all of us are egocentric. Be Allah-centric. Be Allah-conscious. Ittaqullah. In this ayah particularly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say Ittaqullah twice. Just to emphasize on this point. Bring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala back in our life. Be Allah-centric. And each one of you, you should be watchful. You should be careful of what you have prepared for tomorrow. What is tomorrow means? Day of judgment. Now my question to you is, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, لِغَدْ instead of لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ that every one of you should be careful of what you have prepared for tomorrow instead of saying what you have prepared for day of judgment. The answer is very simple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't fool yourself. Day of judgment is as close as tomorrow. IT guys, I know Irving has a lot of IT guys. <laughs> When you have a project deadline tomorrow, you will have a sleepless night, right? Day of judgment, your accountability is as close as tomorrow. Are you preparing it? Allah SWT is reminding us. Our human self in Islam, human being in Islam, believes in Akhirah. He prepares for Akhirah. She's preparing for Akhirah. That's a human definition in the Islam. In the modern West, they have removed the concept of Akhirah. You are free to do whatever you want to do. And now this ayah where I want to basically, this is the essence of my khutbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهِ And do not be like those who forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was their punishment? If we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we privatize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we ignore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the punishment? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ if you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah won't punish you by forgetting you. Because وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ نَسِيَةً Allah doesn't forget. But if you forget Allah, your punishment in this dunya is that فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ Allah will make you forget yourself. <laughs> Did you see what's happening here? Allah says if you will forget your source, if you will forget your master where you came from, if you will forget your spiritual self, you will forget your real self. Then you will treat your body as a machine. Then you will consider a human being as a machine. Because you forget your real source. You forget your real master. And once you forget your real master, who is a master? Then you yourself claim that I am a master. And reflection of this is very evident in our culture. It's actually my body. I am the master of it. My choice. Entire idea of this is a reflection of I am worshipping myself. What else it means? When Allah says, if you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fansahum and fusahum. You know, young people in the audience, those are psych majors or humanities and social sciences. In Western countries, it's a big idea when they say, be true to yourself. Have you heard this? Be your authentic self. Be true to yourself. Be yourself. You know, in Western psychology, most of them as anti-theistic after post-enlightenment, this entire idea came from Jax Russo. Go and read his books. A 17th century philosopher. He said, because obviously being in anti-theistic background, they are not giving any regard to God. They said that be true to yourself means you're not giving any regard to any higher moral authority, including God, including religion, including toxic tradition. Rather, do whatever you want to do. Act as you feel. That is, be yourself. Be your authentic self. And then Sigmund Freud said that you will be false to yourself if you will allow outside morality 
to control you. Did you see how flip? Islam says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ If you forget Allah, if you don't bring yourself under Allah, you'll forget your real self. If you'll put yourself under Allah, that's your real self. They are saying, come out, break the tradition. And then you will be your real self. That's why all the garbage which you see on Netflix and Hollywood and Bollywood and Lollywood and whatsoever would. When you see that, entire movie and dramas are, young people are trying to find their true self. They're trying to break their toxic tradition. Parents are showed with crossed eyes. That's the entire culture based on that. Fansahum and Fusam. You'll forget your real self. The final thing, Fansahum and Fusam. When you will forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will going to make you forget yourself. What does it mean? When you remove Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from your life, you did not enslave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You did not enslave to that one, your master. You know what you will do? You will end up enslaving to the thousands. Subhanallah. Now, you are going to pick a particular major to please that crowd. You are going to dress because you want to please a crowd. Because now you are enslaved to thousands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was saying, come to me. Fansahum and fusahum. However you want to define. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the ability to find him and to bring him and give an Allah-centric worldview to us, inshaAllah ta'ala. <coughs> نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Before we can make dua and before we can pray just want to make one announcement um, that in INT Masjid Alhamdulillah uh, we uh, started a very important class I just want to invite you all some of you are already coming uh, mashallah every Thursday night after Salatul Isha it's a free class uh, we started a class Islam versus modern idols and we do a comparative analysis of Islam versus liberalism, Islam versus humanism, Islam versus nationalism, Islam versus feminism, Islam versus masculism, and there are many isms and ologies which are confusing our young kids. Free class every Thursday after Salatul Isha. Please come. Some of you are already coming. May Allah Taala accept from all of us, inshallah, and may Allah protect our kids, inshallah Taala. Allah Mansuri Islam wa Muslimin. Allah Maqzul Man Qazal Adina Muhammadin Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa La Tajal Na Maahum. Allah Ma La Tadaa Lana Zamban Illa Ghafarta. Wa La Hamman Illa Farrajta. Wa La Dainan Illa Qadaita. Wa La Hajat Min Hawaij Dunya Wal Aakhir Illa Qadaita Haya Arham Al Rahimin. Wa La Maridan Illa Shafita. Wa La Maitan Illa Rahimta. Wa La Dalan Illa Hadaita Arham Al Rahimin. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين المسلمات فقيمة الله